It's time for another one-off rebuild and this time we're going down into the championship. We'll be taking over at Sunderland and within the space of five seasons in one video we're going to try and take this club not only back into the Premier League but hopefully to some kind of glory. In real life they got to the playoffs but in FM they're predicted to come 10th place in the championship mid-table but they've got nice facilities, they've got a very nice stadium as well with a 48,000 capacity and they've got plenty of history. Six Premier League title wins granted the last one was in 1936 they've got two FA Cups under their belt as well they are a big club with a lot of history but they're in the championship you can see they got relegated from the Prem and the next season were relegated straight out of the championship spent some years in League One but they're starting to recover a little bit now and hopefully we can take them back into the Premier League and we'll try and beat their highest place finish in the last 20 years which was 10th place back in the 2010 era now we've got a lot of work to do here at Sunderland I don't think they're the finished article but but before we get started, a quick favor from you guys. I want to ask you to do a few things for me. First, if you could just take a second to hit that like button, I'd massively appreciate it because it will help push this video out to as many people as possible. Second, it's time for you guys to get involved here. If you go into the comments, let me know what rebuild you'd like to see next and I'll write all the ideas down and whoever gets the most likes, we'll try and do that one as our next rebuild. And finally, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I'd massively appreciate it if you could do so. We're trying to get to 20 20,000 subscribers and these videos I'll put a little stat on screen now but lots of these rebuild videos are watched by people who aren't subscribed so if you could click that button I'd massively appreciate it and I won't do any more begging don't worry we're going to get right into it now so Sunderland where are we at well their squad is an okay one if I sort it by ability you can see we've got a few players of high ability but both of those apparently our best players according to FM are on loan in Ahmad Diallo who had a great season for them in real life and Joe Gelhart as well is also one of our better players. In terms of players at the club that will be useful though, we've got Ross Stewart, Dan Neal, Jack Clark, Anthony Patterson in goal. He's a good young goalkeeper that we could potentially build around. And what I do like about this team is that a lot of them are very good young players. I mean, half a squad, if not over half a squad here, as you can see, are 25 or under. We've got a lot of players with potential and hopefully that's going to bode well for this rebuild. We predicted a mid-table finish but Sunderland of course did get playoffs in real life so maybe we can do a similar job there but before we do that we're going to see if we can make a few transfers. Sunderland have done the majority of their business already so there won't be too much to do but I'll see if I can pick up any players to help us and then we'll simulate the first year, see where we end up and then really kick on in our own rebuild from there. And we only bought in one player. I felt we were quite light at centre back in terms of quality. Now I don't watch Sunderland in real life so I don't know who's actually actually considered to be their best players but I'm just going based off of the attributes that I see in FM which is all I can do here I'm trying to figure out who are the players that might actually be with his long term and I felt like at sense back we did need an improvement at least for the short term so we found this guy Nikola Maximovic formerly of Napoli Spartak Moscow Torino as well he's a player that's been around the block and has played plenty of games 25 international appearances and he was available as a free agent he'll be a good older head in this team full of young players and hopefully he can just solidify that defense and help this team out in our first season but that's all we've done now tactically I've settled on a 4-3-3 for now I know pretty basic we might change it as time goes on and if we pick our best 11 this is currently what we're working with so we've got Patterson in goal who we mentioned earlier Maximovic comes in at the back with a back four of Lyndon Gooch, Danny Baff and Dennis Serkin who looks to be a good left back we could potentially keep around the club is he formerly of Tottenham he is Sunderland signed him for one million apparently when they were in league one we've got Corey Evans Dan Neal and Embleton in the midfield Jack Clark's a very talented young player that we have and then we've got Ahmad Diallo and Joe Gelhart we'll be relying a lot on these loan players to get us through this first season but we'll see where we end up simulate the first year and like I say really kick on with our own version of this rebuild and what a first season we've had I promise you it's not going to be this easy going through this rebuild but in our first season We've got promoted from the championship. I thought we'd at least be here for another year, but we have finished top of the table on 100 points. Norwich only behind us by one point, and then Luton and Blackburn were also very close to us. It was a really tight table, actually, but we come out as title winners, six losses, 10 draws, and 30 wins 
for our Sunderland team. The cup competitions, we didn't do anything special, but let's have a look to see how we did this well. Who were the players that carried us to glory? If we check, Joe Gelhart on loan from Leeds, a very good player and football manager. He has gone and got his 33 goals in 44 league appearances, seven assists as well. This loan has certainly been a successful one. He's helped us out a hell of a lot and he's been great for us. But our second best player of the season isn't Ahmad Diallo. It's actually the man that we bought in, Nikola Maximovic. He's been a solid servant for us at the back with a 7.12 average match rate in across the course of the season. He's been a big help and that's certainly been a successful transfer. We've got Patterson and Ballard, our goalkeeper, and two centre backs as two of our best players go to show how strong our defence was this year and plenty of good performances all around. We've done good. It's a great first season. I say we've done good. We've done amazingly well there without us doing any work. So I'm not really going to take any credit for that. We bought in one player, put a basic tactic on and it's ended up with us winning the league. So clearly this Sunderland team was being underrated by FM. We've got a young team that's only going to get better but they're nowhere near ready for the Premier League. It's going to be a real challenge to survive, so we need to make the right transfers to keep ourselves up. We've been given £30 million and plenty in the wage budget. Let's see if we can make a team worthy of staying up in the Prem. Now, usually in these rebuilds, I'll talk about all the players that we've sold first, but we didn't really sell anyone this window. A lot of our players I did want to potentially move on just didn't have any interest in them. I suppose a lot of these players now had Premier League tax on them in terms of their valuation, and most clubs weren't willing to pay that but we did bring a handful of players in to help with our team. Firstly, I felt like we needed some better talent at right back. So we've got an option here to compete for that right back position in James Bree, who we paid a very small fee of £375,000 for. He was in the Prem last year playing four substitute appearances for Southampton, formerly of Luton, Villa and Barnsley. He's a player that is clearly talented, but hasn't really settled down in his career yet. Whether he'll be a regular starter for us is another question, but he's certainly a good depth option, available at a cheap fee as well. We'll bring him in and hope he can just sail along in that right back spot. Ahmad Diallo is not with us this year, nor is Joe Gelhart, so we've decided to look to the loan market again for some players to help our team. And we've landed on the Paraguayan Julio and Ciso, who towards the end of this season in real life has started to break into that Brighton side and look very good. I know he scored a very good goal against my team Chelsea here, um, very annoyingly so. But yes, he is a very talented player that hasn't really broken into the Brighton first team just yet in the FM world. And they actually got relegated as well last season. So we were able to pick him up on a loan deal. We're not playing a crazy amount for him either. He's a talented player who offers us some depth on either wing should we need him. I'm not sure how many games he'll play, but he's certainly talented. He'll certainly help us out, even if it is just as a backup player. We're not able to go out there and sign Mbappe and Haaland just yet, so we've got to get our business right. And I think NCSO is good value for money on loan for a year until we can hopefully stay up in the Premier League and get better quality in. But one of our biggest signings of the summer was this man, our new striker to replace Joe Gelhart. Like Gelhart, we focused on a young striker in the hopes he can get better and grow with us. Tresoldi was high Highly rated by our scouts, 18 years of age, plenty of talent coming in from Hanover in the second division of Germany, where he had a good year last time out at 17 years of age. And we think he could be way better than what he is now. So we've gone for him, splashed 10 million pounds on him. Hopefully he'll be with us for the long term. There is a release clause in his contract of 25 million for Champions League clubs. So hopefully he doesn't get so good that teams start to activate that. We're predicted to go down. So to get Premier League level players straight away is quite hard. So instead we've got to go for these young players and the players that are maybe high level championship level and hope that they can settle into our team and keep us up in the Premier League. So Trasoldi is in. Hopefully he'll get better as the years go on. If you don't know already in these rebuilds, I only use scout recommendations. I don't go based on my own judgment because I know which wonder kids are the best. I make so many football manager videos. I know who we should get. So I have to wait for the scouts to bring them in. And when they bought up Fabrizio Diaz, I was so happy. I love this man. I've signed him in a lot of my personal saves. The Uruguayan, midfielder, plenty of talent, can play so many roles. He's very versatile. And even though he doesn't stand out as a passer, as a tackler, as a goal scorer, he does all of it at a decent level. A good box-to-box -box player. £2.5 million we paid for him from Liverpool FC out in Uruguay. A player with a lot of potential, but a lot of ability also. He'll slot straight in to our midfield. And finally, we've brought in Christopher Ayer of relegated 
Brentford, a deep line midfielder or a centre back option, six foot five and plenty of international experience at only the age of 25. He's a leader as well. Played for big clubs like Celtic in his past and of course Brentford, a consistent performer. We've paid £18.5 million for him. I believe Brentford did get relegated. Yes, they did. And that's why we were able to get him on such a cheap fee. But we're happy to have him on board. He comes in as one of the most talented players in our whole squad and he really helps the team out now in terms of ability. And now with those new players bought in, this is what our best 11 looks like. We've got Patterson in goal, James Bree at right back, Ballard in defence with Maximovic and Serkin. I'll be honest, this isn't a defence. It gives me a lot of hope of staying up, but then going forward, it gets a little bit better. Our midfield of Ayer, Diaz and Embleton isn't a bad one. And then up front, we've got Gooch, Clark and Tressoldi. It's not the world's best. It's going to be hard to keep this team up, but if we do go down, at least we've got some good young players that we can build around and come back up. And hopefully we can do a bit better if we do come back up into the Prem. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves yet. In terms of where we're predicted to come, we're predicted to come 19th. So it's not looking great, but we'll simulate the first season and see if we can somehow stay up in the Premier League. Okay, so here we are at the end of our second season. You can see the cup competitions didn't go well. And as you can tell, we are not in any of the top top 16 positions in the league table. We're going to scroll down. Brace yourselves. We managed to survive. Very, very lucky, mind you. We finished on 31 points, the same as Norwich, but beat them by three goal difference. We lost the same amount of games as them, drew the same amount of games and won the same amount. But we somehow managed to stay up. We were far away from the teams above us, far away from that 40 point safety mark. We really should have gone down. I think there's just three teams worse than us this year. Middlesbrough especially not doing great. Forest and Norwich going down with us. If you don't know already, I make the transfers and then a holiday ahead. And when I was seeing it at the top, it was like, okay, 18th place, 19th place, 19th place, 18th place. And I didn't know if we were going to stay up. And we did it right at the end with a crazy result as well, mind you. So I've had a look at this. We lost most of our games towards the end of the season, but out of nowhere pulled out a 3-0 win against Manchester City at home, which kept us up because outside of that, we hadn't really won for a long time. We lost our last game of the season 6-1. Um, we got a draw against Wolves away as well. But um, yeah, I don't know how we've done it. I say I don't know how. There was one man that really kept us in this division. If we have a look by average match rating, no one's really performed that great. Although Tresoldi on a 6.8 to average match rating has been quite harshly done by those ratings, I think, because actually he scored 17 goals in 37 Premier League appearances, which is very good for a Sunderland striker, I'd say. Nearly 20 goals goals a season for him from a young player as well that's only going to get better without him we likely would have gone down this year so give a big thanks to Tresoldi we've been given a good transfer budget of 64 million pounds being in the Premier League you get a lot of money to spend obviously we'll have to balance that a little bit with the wages to sort everything out but we'll see if we can bring in some talent now to solidify ourselves in the Prem hopefully get more points than 31 because if we do that again next year I'm almost certain we would go down so for season three let's crack on with the transfers don't forget to like the video if you are enjoying up to this point and let's see who we can sign again there wasn't really any outgoings this summer I mean there was players that left on a free deal most players that were championship level whose contract were expiring we let go when we've tried to replace them with at least somewhat Premier League quality players but yeah, no real sales in that sense. So no one that's making us loads of cash. Thankfully, though, being in the Prem, we will get money to spend either way. And one player that we've bought in, another low knee to help us out, add some depth at left back, is the Dutch fullback Ian Matson, who in real life has had a great season out on loan at Burnley. In the FM world, it didn't work quite as well. He went out to Salzburg for the next season, and now he's coming to us on loan. I like the player. I think he gives us depth. He's not also going to want loads of game time and kick up a fuss if he isn't playing. We get to use him for a year, and then he can go back to Chelsea, or maybe we'll sign him if he really impresses. Another Dutch fullback that we've brought in. I say fullback. This man can play pretty much anywhere. It's Milian Manchweff. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I almost certainly am not. He's a Dutchman who comes from Vitesse Arnhem out in the Eredivisie where he's been playing pretty well for a couple of seasons. We pay £7 million for him and get a player that's not out of this world by any stretch, but he can play a lot of roles and that's really going to help us in terms of our squad depth. I'm seeing him more as a potential left back than anything else, but he can also help at right back if needed. But being left footed, I feel like we should stick him out on that left hand side. A nice depth option for 7 million, but we did need to bring in some real first team quality talent alongside these guys. And I think we certainly did that. And I'm going to quickly run through these players because we've got quite a few. We've brought in Brandon Williams of Manchester United on a free deal after his contract 
contract expired and he comes in as one of our better players in his position. A young player with a potential to get better. That's exactly what we're looking for with this Sunderland team. An Englishman as well. That's going to help out with domestic registration rules. So Brandon Williams is in and getting him for free, I feel like is a good deal. We've signed a Ukrainian midfielder by the name of, and I've tried to practice this a few times already. So apologies if I do get it wrong. Alexander Pick Halyanok. I think that's how we do it. He's a Ukrainian 27-year-old midfielder with a lot of talent who I'm sure will step in to our first team quite comfortably. We signed him from Dinner Pro out in the Ukrainian division for so five and a half million after two good seasons for them. He's in his prime years now. Hopefully that will mean good things for us and we can get good performances on the pitch. But again, we're not really breaking the bank with any of these signings. And it's the same case for a new centre-back option that we have by the name of Leo Duarte, a 27-year-old Brazilian centre-back. We picked him up from Basak Sahir, a side out in Turkey. I've really given myself some hard things to pronounce in this video, but he's cost us 8.5 million, had a really good season last time out, and he's a solid centre-back option. He's a decent passer, doesn't have the best vision in the world, but he certainly comes in as one of our better centre-back options, as you can tell by the list that you can see here. Then, in what I think is a real coup for the club, I had no idea why we were able to get him for so cheap or why he was even being offered out for this cheap. But um, Jeremy Doku, the Belgian 22-year-old who comes from Lille, um, has signed for us. I mean, he starts off at Rennes. He ended up going to Lille for 11.5 million, never really got any game time anywhere or did very well. And for that reason, he was available for a cheap fee. Lille didn't get relegated or anything like that. We were just able to pick him up for 10 million. Came up on the scout report. I didn't believe a transfer valuation. We signed him. He actually doesn't come in as of good of a player as I thought he might. He's actually not as gifted as I think he is in real life. He's better than the options we did have on the wing and we'll take him. A Belgian international, a youngster with room to get better. He fits the bill perfectly for our team and he gives a bit of excitement on that wing. And our final sign-in is one of the best players we've got in the whole team. Again, another great transfer for us, I think. On the opposite flank to Doku, we have signed Marcus Edwards, the Englishman who is playing for Sporting CP out in the Portuguese divisions. The transfer was accepted for £20.5 million He's a talented player cutting in on his left foot. I think he's a guaranteed first team quality player, a Premier League level player for sure. I feel like he's playing at a level below where he could be by joining us here at Sunderland, but we're not going to complain if we have a look now at our best 11. I think I've already got it on here for you, but it is going to be Patterson in goal still, Williams, Ballard, Duarte, Serkin, Aya, Diaz, the guy whose name I'm not going to try again, Edwards, Doku, and Trasoldi. That front three excites me a lot, actually. Plenty of good young talent in there. Direct, quick players. Hopefully they can get us some goals. We've got a solid midfield. I still think our defence is lacking a little bit, but hey-ho, it's what we could do in the transfer window. We spent a lot of money this year. I still think we spent it smart and done it well, but uh, yeah, I feel like we could still improve in that defence. Let's see, though, how we get on season three. Can we stay up by more than a free goal difference this time? And the answer is yes. Finally, we don't have to scroll down to see where we finished. We still finished in a pretty poor position, still didn't get to that 40 points mark, but we won more games than last year and we've ended up on 39 points, which thankfully this time was seven points clear of the relegation zone. Bournemouth leads and Watford going down, but you can see it's been a much better year from us. We're starting to climb the table a little bit. We still want more points than what we're getting here, but remember it's a young squad that are getting better. We also got to the semi-final of the FA Cup where unfortunately closure is Sunderland fans but we lost to Newcastle which I know wouldn't have gone down very well and they eventually went on to win the competition so apologies for that we did our best but it wasn't to be but a 14th place finish and a semi-final of the FA Cup it's been a more successful year than what we've had before I feel like we're starting to at least become a team that even without major improvements, could at least stay up again in the Prem, which is exactly what we wanted to do. It's a big budget this year with nearly £80 million to spend. Obviously, the board are happy that we're keeping the team in the Premier League. And now we're going to crack on with the transfers for season four. We're only going to do five seasons, so we haven't got that long left to get a really good result, which is what I want. I'd like to maybe get some European football or win a Carabao or an FA Cup. I'm not expecting a Champions League win or a league win. I'm not stupid, but... Uh, yeah, I feel like we could definitely at least push up the table, maybe even just aim for a top half finish at some point. In terms of our best performers, Fabrizio Diaz did well, although he didn't play the most games in the world. Nicola Trasoldi was also very good. He's been getting better and better. This year, it's 21 goals in 37 Premier League appearances, hitting that 20 mark. We're very happy with that. Marcus Edwards had a decent year, as did Serking, Ayer, Patterson. It's a good team. We're ready to improve it even more, though, particularly that defence. I feel like we could improve. So let's crack on with our 
our transfers and hopefully it can be a way better year in season four and start to give these Sunderland fans something to cheer. And we've finally done it, not won the Champions League, not won a cup, but we finally sold a player, a player that a team was actually interested in that we wanted to let go, Isaac Lahaji, who's been with us since the championship and has played less and less. Montpellier came in for two and a half million. We said fine. And that is our only sale again of the summer. It's still the same situation where we're letting the rubbish players leave at the end of their contract. I say rubbish, sorry, not Premier League quality players leave at their end of their contracts and bringing in new players to replace them. But Lahaji is the only major sale here. We've bought in plenty of talent yet again. Kind of taking the Brighton model this season of just staying up for a few years, now starting to bring in high quality players that can get better and we can sell on for a profit. I feel like we're getting to nearly that stage. And a great signing for us this year was Philip Roningen Jorgensen, a 23 year old Norwegian midfielder with great ability who we signed from AC Milan. They signed him from a team out in Norway, loaned him out to France where he had a really good season for Brest, a team that you wouldn't expect to do amazingly well. So then we were able to pick him up for 11 and a half million. I think he's a great talent, comes in as you can see as one of our best midfielders and he is going to revolutionize that midfield I hope. And for me he's the kind of midfielder that could be in a team in like the top eight, top seven of the Premier League. So I think he really does step up our midfield a little bit, adds that star quality. We've also loaned in a centre-back from Manchester City to act as our fourth centre-back really as a depth option. It's Taylor Harwood Bellis who I believe was on loan at Burnley in real life also in their good season under company this year. Hasn't played for two seasons now at City so what it'll do for us I don't know but he was available for loan, don't have to pay too much and he can cover that position for a year for us. We then improve the midfield a little bit more by signing Simone Bastoni, a 28 year old Italian midfielder who's got plenty of work rate coming in from Spezia, a team that again you wouldn't expect to do amazing in their league but he's been consistently good for them, a bright spark in their team. His contract was up, we've signed him for completely free, I think he comes in as one of our better midfielders as you can see, him and Jorgensen are our two best now which really bodes well for the future. Likely going to play in that box-to-box -box role, I feel like he would do a good job there with that work rate, with the ability that he has all around. So hopefully he can be a great midfielder for us. And then we've brought in a new right back to compete in that position. We have signed Sergio Carrera. He's a 24-year-old Spaniard that we've brought in from Celta Vigo out in the Spanish divisions for £13 million. Pounds. Not the biggest fee in the world, not the world's best player, but comes in as one of our better options at right back. And I feel like he'll at least be value for money. Might not go on to be a £50 million pound player, mind you, but he'll at least be a good talent. A lot of these players that we're signing, I haven't really heard of either. So I'm happy with like the diversity of players we're picking up. I always try and sign new people in rebuilds. And I feel like we've done that here today. And now if we go by our best 11, let's see what it is. Have we improved the team? The answer is certainly yes, actually, because Carrera comes in, as does Bastoni and Jorgensen in the midfield. So we've got a much more talented midfield now. I think arguably I would play Aya at the back there and maybe bring in Diaz if it was up to me in that position. I feel like that's a bit better. And also Doku instead of Clark. But at least we've got good talent, lots of depth options. Our bench is looking a lot better. Some Premier League quality on there. One player I want to point out, by the way, Abdullah Bar, who started with us in the championship. He's played plenty of games for us and looks like a great talent. So well done to Sunderland for picking him up in real life. I don't know if he's been a really good player for them yet or anything like that, but he's certainly got the potential in FM. So he looks like a great transfer. And yeah, he's been a big part of this team from the start. Feel like I should have mentioned him. And now though, we're going to simulate our fourth season, see how we do. And then we've only got one year left after that. And we asked for a top half finish last year and we've certainly done it. We have finished in ninth place, far more points than what we've got in our last couple of seasons. It's 61 points, only seven points off Newcastle in seventh place. Hopefully by the end of the three, build we can at least overtake our rivals and get ahead of them in the league but it's been 18 wins 13 losses minus four goal difference still not the best compared to all the teams above us but we'll certainly take it we're obviously shipping a lot of goals but scoring a lot also again nothing to note really in the cups but it's been a good season for us 61 points very impressive I would say and if we have a look at our best performers Tresoldi is becoming one of the best strikers in the league now 28 goals in 38 appearances 7.28 average match rating with the talent around Around him he's really started to kick on and our team has done so well this year we're very happy with that I didn't expect to finish that high you can see the players I was asking the assistant to play as often as possible and not all of them have done amazingly well but at least we finished higher in the league this season it's been a much better year from us and as a side note as well just to let you know the staff situation obviously we're in the Premier League now but it's in a good place and in terms of facilities you can see we've improved things a hell of a lot the training facilities the junior coaching the youth recruitment things are going very well at the club and we all also have this young prospect that we're going to promote to the first team now 
Donald Bangoro, who looks very talented. But that's season four over, a very good season. Now we've got one year left. Can we push on potentially into the top six, into some kind of European football? Let's see what we can do. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I'd massively appreciate it if you just take a second, free to do, just to hit that button. It would really mean a lot to me. Help get our numbers up on the channel and get more of you on board so you don't miss any of these rebuilds. But we've had our first major sale, Brandon Williams. We signed him on a free deal a couple of years ago, played two seasons for us, mostly as a starter, actually. So it was a really good deal in the end for us. And then we sold him for 26 million to West Ham. I think we've replaced him well, but the youngster has clearly made a name for himself, goes on to be a regular starter now for West Ham in the Premier League. Good luck to him. We'll take the cash. That's good business on our end. And we've gone for quality over quantity in this transfer window. We spent most of our money on a few key players to try and make the best team that we could and one player that we've gone for is Thiago Almado. In this FM world we've been trying to get him for a while he ended up signing for Leeds they got relegated and now he was available for 35 million after a good season in the championship for them he comes in as a really talented player for us and because he's an attacking midfielder and we've got more talent in the team I think we're now going to shift to a 4-2-3-1 so to bring that defensive midfielder into an attacking position it gives a bit more impetus going forward we're a better side now I think our biggest transfer of the rebuild 35 mil a lot of money but hopefully he'll live up to the hype we've paid 25 million for pascal strike a belgian center back 26 years of age heading into his prime with plenty of ability a consistent performer who's got good physical abilities he's left footed as well which will help the balance of our defense he's good in the air nice passing ability as well lots of international appearances for belgium clearly a very talented player comes in as one of our best and i feel like 25 million is quite a steal for the ability of play that we see here i know the season hasn't gone well for leeds in real life but in the FM world, he's a real talent and someone we're very happy to have in our side. And our replacement for Brandon Williams for pretty much the exact same amount of money is Tino Livermento, who we spent £27 million on. I think he got relegated with Southampton and there was a release clause activated. Either way, whatever the reason was, we were able to get him for such a cheap fee. We are not complaining. A good right back with plenty of potential, Premier League ready as well at the age of 23. I think a future England international, if we play our cards right, I really like him. I think he's going to come in as our best right back by far. And I think now our defence is starting to look a lot more solid and a lot more like a Premier League level defence. If we have a look at our best 11 in our new formation, it actually looks really talented now. I mean, our goalkeeper is still Patterson, who's been here right from the start. So congratulations to him for sticking around. The same goes for Dennis Serkin, who's became a very nice left back option. Bear in mind, Sunderland signed him when they were in the third division of England. Now he's worth nearly 40 million, which we're very happy to see. Pascal strike at the back with Aya and Liveramento. Bastoni and Jorgensen in midfield, Edwards, Doku, Almada and Tresoldi. It's a very good team, probably one of the most exciting sides Sunderland will have had in their history. We're going to try and do better than ninth place that we got last year. Can we push on into those European spots? Let's see how this team can do. And we've got a big surprise, actually. I mean, the Cups didn't go well, but I saw at the top as I was simulating that we were finishing in about eighth place. And I thought, oh, well, just missed out on, you know, any kind of European football. At least it's a better season than last year. You'd be wrong if you thought we missed out on European football. I don't know how. I don't know why we've got so many slots for it. But apparently the Conference League spot is now going to the eighth place team in the league. Maybe that is how it is in real life. I can't remember. That doesn't seem right to me, though. I feel like it's seventh place. It, maybe we've just got an extra Champions League spot. I feel like that might be the case, actually looking at this. Either way, however it's happened, we're not going to complain. We have finished in eighth place and we're going in to the Conference League now. We've turned Sunderland into a European competing team and even though we didn't finish above Newcastle, we'll certainly take it. 71 points, 23 wins, only two draws and 13 losses. The fact that we took this club from the Championship into European football, I would certainly class as a successful rebuild, also whilst improving the facilities and the staff situation at the club. In terms of our best performers and who's done well for us, Thiago Am Armada had a great year. Jeremy Doku is finally coming into his own in a Sunderland shirt. Ballard still here doing well for us. He's been here from the start. Patterson, Bastoni, Diaz, Tresoldi. He didn't get as many goals this year, but Almada has helped out with that. I guess a change of formation takes the pressure off of Tresoldi a little bit. After five seasons, I'd certainly say that's a successful rebuild, particularly when you think about the talent that we've brought in. A lot of those players are young and will get better yet. We finished in the top half of the Prem in a European spot. I think I feel like Sunderland fans would be very happy with that. So there you go, everyone. That's the end of a rebuild. Smash the like button if you haven't already. Let me know down below who you want to see next. Subscribe for more and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>